Hello. There's a unique history project underway in the Hill District where the residents are the historians and it's online. We'll hear how they're bringing that history to life. Meanwhile, bringing a new community center to Penn Hills in memory of a young child lost to gun violence. We'll hear how this project will motivate young kings and queens. Plus an upcoming gala with a cause to attract more African Americans to the industry of real estate. We'll talk to three generations who are getting it done. So pull up a chair and meet us at the corner. Intersection starts right now. Hello, I'm Lisa Smith, Director of Community Impact at KDKA Plus and the host of Intersections. When it comes to historic neighborhoods around Pittsburgh, there's lots of attention on the Hill District. It was home to, of course, August Wilson, the Crawford Grill, George Benson, and jazz in general. But a history project underway right now is working to make sure the history of the Hill isn't lost. It's called the Hill District Digital History. And joining me to talk more about it are Marima Reliance, she is the president of the Hill CDC. Dr. Aaron Cowan, he is a history professor at Slippery Rock University. And Renee Wilson, a Hill District resident and community historian. Welcome everyone to Intersections. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so Marima, first tell us a little bit about how, you know, this project just kind of got started and the need for a project like this. Absolutely, so uh, thanks for having us, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, Dr. Cowan reached out to the Hill CDC uh, uh, when there was a car accident at Freedom Corner. And um, it damaged Freedom Corner, and anyone who follows anything about the Hill District knows that Freedom Corner is sacred mm -hmm. land. It um, documents the, uh, many um, you know, black folks in particular, but civil rights leaders on, in physical form um, at Center and, uh, Center and um, Crawford Street. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he reached out, he said, what can I do to help? And I said, well, we already have a committee that's focused on that initiative, but um, you know, we have some ideas about other, other things we can do to document history. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it really grew out of that initial outreach and conversation. And it's something that I've long been passionate about, um, better documenting the history of the Hill District as particularly as it relates to the built environment. Mm -hmm. So it was really a great time and opportunity to, to do it now. Yeah, so Dr. Cowan, talk a little bit about what kind of attracted you to this work? I know you mm -hmm. took a sabbatical to do some of it and even how you're involving your students. Sure, absolutely. So I'm an urban historian. My research is in history of the American city. And to me, the Hill District is uh, the embodiment of a lot of that history, right? You could stand uh, in the Hill District in the 1800s and, and go all the way up to the present day and really see so many of the major trends and, and uh, um, you know, larger uh, forces of history that have shaped the city. And so um, I've used it often as a sort of an example in my teaching. Uh, it's local, my students you know, are familiar with Pittsburgh, and, um, but they may only know a little bit about the Hill. And so we often dive in and look um, uh, at that history more in depth. And so um, I've always enjoyed that and been passionate about uh, helping my students uh, really encounter that kind of history. Uh, of course, you know, beginning with European immigrants and then, uh, you know, moving into the 20th century from the Great Migration uh, Black History and uh, the sort of culture and uh, um, community that developed in the Hill. So uh, for it seemed a great opportunity um, to uh, contribute and um, to have my students also doing some research. And so as we talked about the project in the past year, my students started doing some of the first stories for the site, um, uh, which they found really exciting. And then um, from there, we've really worked to um, build community engagement and have people in the Hill um, uh, active in the site as well and, and adding to it and being authors. So. Yeah. So what it is is a website mm -hmm. where people can go on and learn about the Hill District. And Renee, I want to bring you in here to this conversation mm -hmm. because you are one of the people who was out there talking to people, interviewing them, getting their stories. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the important part piece that that played in kind of pulling this information together. Because you know, um, uh, black history has always been oral history. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has been passed down orally. So these conversations with people in the community, it, 
brings it more to life because it sometimes when you get a book and it's written it's like fragmented history mm. but when you put the or your oral history in it 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 brings it to life and it and it brings it together mm. because you may have a part of something that is written but something is left out it seems small but it's very important mm -hmm. and when you put it together you're able to put the history together yeah. instead of fragment pieces the whole puzzle mm -hmm. and it looks so different yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you know not putting you on the spot but you're a relative of august wilson i'm august wilson's first cousin all right yes. so um you were looking into his history on the Hill and you were saying that you saw or learned things that you didn't know before. Right, I, I, I'm looking at not just August Wilson's history, but um, the history of the um, Black Action Society mm -hmm. and the University of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And I was very um, surprised to learn how much, I thought I knew a lot about the history of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how much I didn't know until I put these pieces together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like how things became, it came out of the, the movement um, of the black power and um, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. you know, death and the things that they had put together where Pitt was coming and, you know, getting things from the community to take them into the schools. Mm -hmm. And that is where August and Rob Penny, you know what I mean? That's, that's where they sort of fleshed her together to do all the things that they have done. And people like Mark, uh, Mar Margaret Malliance, um, who did so much of it, but it's missing from that part. Like you don't understand how much she had to do with the things that we seen that they came out of Rob Penny and, and August Wilson mm -hmm. because of what they were doing in the black society, mm -hmm. uh, society, the, um, the action society to, to bring this all together. So it's not always a map where you can see, well, this is what some of these people are left out yeah. of history they were a part of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's missing pieces. Mm -hmm. And when you have missing pieces, you can't really see the whole history. So right. to me, it's very important that all these pieces go together. Mm -hmm. Like Rob Penny goes with August Wilson. And now you'll see, there was a question, uh, was he a part of the black movement? Of course he was. I mean, you know what I mean? It was molded from the black movement of making it. And that was Margaret Melanson's wow. portion so you, of it. So you get to hear some of your family members <laughs> in yeah. the I history do. too. And you're learning probably some. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but how can people um, participate in this project? Because it is ongoing. It's, it's not over. It, this is just the beginning of it. Right, this is a living, breathing project. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is not designed to be perfect. It is designed to be a tool and a project that uh, community members, stakeholders, uh, folks from perspectives who may have you know, moved away can contribute to. So you, know, you can go to hillhistory.org um, and you can um, participate in building the narratives of the built environment, the culture, the people, um, and we have bus tours on the website. Mm -hmm. um, you can do kind of live tours as you're on certain bus lines. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fantastic project. We're really excited about its future, collaborations, partnerships, and more. Mm -hmm. All right, well, congratulations on everything you guys are doing. Hopefully we'll have you guys come back and give us an update on what you found. Thanks Absolutely. again. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, coming up, turning tragedy into learning for young people in Penn Hills. Intersections, we'll be right back. A new community center in Penn Hills, that's what's planned at the former Lincoln Park Community Center. And it's dedicated in the memory of 18-month-old Deary A. Thomas. He was a victim of a drive-by shooting in downtown Pittsburgh in 2022. Khalil Darden is the founder and CEO of Young Black Motivated Kings and Queens, which is launching the new center as a place where young people can experience positive and enriching programs. Khalil Darden joins me now here on Intersections. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about, you know, why you wanted to have this community center that really does a ton for young people. So people, when I, when I was in college uh, and I recently graduated in December, people always asked me, 
what do you want to do after you graduate? And I was like, I want to go back home and open up community center. Mm -hmm. um, I never knew that was going to be my real vision and what will really come to um, pass. And in 2022, my godson was murdered. Um, and I took a lot of time off work. Um, I took time reflecting to figure out if this was the work that I really wanted to do. Um, it's, it's hard to be able to continue to pour into community when community has taken from you. Um, and in November, I had a conversation with somebody um, who was like, how would you feel about having your own space? Um, and so for me, it's being able to create a space where young people like the Avery would be able to experience and be safe um, and not have to worry about the experience of losing their loved one. And so for us, it's being able to kind of serve young people from very small all the way up to old age. Um, and what we consider old age is high school, right? Um, is that but, old age? <laughs> but for us, it's really being able to make sure that this doesn't continue to happen to young people. Yeah. Um, ki little kids like Avery won't have to worry about what happened to him, yeah. happening to them based on our space. Yeah, you. we had talked before and you were saying that you had lost friends mm -hmm. um, to gun violence. And, and this is something that will give young people an outlet um, and some motivation for some other things. So talk a little bit about what all you have planned to go into this space. Um, so we were planning to do some STEM activities um, and which I've learned lately is STEAM now, including art mm -hmm. into the STEM factor, um, out of school time programming from after school. And summer programming will also offer some different culinary classes, entrepreneurship, mentorship to young people. Um, we offer a food pantry every second Saturday of the month that we kind of adopted from the old Lincoln Park Community Center. And then we'll continue to offer uh, daycare programming, Head Start, all those different things, really being able to service all of young people, right? And so being able to take them from daycare all the way to high school and create this kind of Ferris wheel where young people are able to stay all throughout our programming and then be able to come back and work for us to pour back into young people. Um, my hope is that I can show other young people what it's like to have a passion to want to change lives and be able to do it. That's where the motivation comes in. Yeah. So was was there something like this for you growing up or was this something that you wished that you had when you were so when I was younger, I was a kid at Community Empowerment Association, which is in Homewood. Mm -hmm. um, and it gave me vision, right? It gave me, it showed me what it looked like to have people who cared about you, who loved on you, who were able to kind of pour into you and show you what it's like for someone outside of your household to want you to be something in life. And so for me, it was being able to continue that vision. Um, but being somewhere young, I think one of the things, the only thing that I was missing was having young people at the table making decisions. And so for me, it was being able to create an organization where young people can come and have a voice in what they want to participate in. I wasn't a kid who wanted to go to the Science Center. Um, <laughs> but for me, it's being able to give our kids one of those oftentimes opinions in what we do so that they feel valued and they feel like they're a part of what's happening and not just participating. Yeah, there's also um, a room dedicated to Antoine Rose. Why did you want to have that there? So for me, when Antoine Rose was murdered, um, I was a vital part in the activism that took place in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, and from that, me and his mom built a really strong connection. Um, but one of the things that I vowed to her when Antoine first passed away was to never let his life and legacy um, to tear away or to let anything to let anyone forget him and so for me with this space that we're creating I want to make sure that every young person because um, a lot of young people don't get to learn about Antoine right they don't get to learn about what he did or um, how he was impactful to the city of Pittsburgh and so for me it's being able to have him be a stakeholder in our space where young people Antoine was um, an arts person right so from writing to drawing all those different type of things and so for me it was the perfect space that was centered and dedicated around his life and legacy. Um, and so that room will not only be our art space, but it'll house uh, previous art that was created by Antoine. Mm -hmm. So that young people are able to see that, reflect on it. Um, and that room will be called the Rose Room. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, we're calling it where creativity grows. Yeah, you, you started this eight years ago. Is this center what you were aiming for at that time? Uh, we were talking previously in the green room um, and they asked me like, well, was this your vision? And I'm like, how did you get into this? Um, and I honestly didn't have one. Yeah. For me, it was just changing lives, um, and impacting lives of young people. But I seen that for us to be able to do that effectively, um, whether that's cost-wise or programmatic-wise for, for us to be in our own space. Um, I want our young people to be able to have ownership, right? To be able to say that they have something that's theirs. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's being able to offer that to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I never dreamed of this. For me, is living this dream now. Um, and bringing and allowing our young people to be a part of that dream as well. Yeah, 
This is what giving back looks like, right? I try. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And we look forward to uh, opening, you think, in the fall, maybe? Yep, I'm hoping so. All right. Well, we're hopefully we'll be there to see it. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Well, coming up, there are three generations working towards one goal in the business of real estate. We'll tell you what when we come back. You're watching Intersections. Well, many see home ownership as a key piece of the American dream, but for African Americans, statistics continue to show a wide gulf in reaching that dream. In its 2023 report, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers pointed to several obstacles, a 30 percentage point difference between the number of black homeowners and white homeowners, lower median incomes for African Americans, lower net worth for African Americans, fewer homes available for sale, and more. But three Pittsburgh women are hoping to change that, and they're hoping to help more African Americans see the real estate industry as a profession. And oh, by the way, they're all related. So joining me now, are Lena Michelle. Mm -hmm. She is the principal broker with Regency Crest Realty, mm -hmm. Gloria Besley, founder and principal broker with Regency Crest Realty, and Cameron Lee, vice president of business development at Regency Crest Realty. Welcome to Intersections, Thank ladies. You. Thank, Thank you. you for having Thank us. You well, okay, so help us understand the relationship. Oh, so. the founder, um, <laughs> and this is mom. Okay. Okay. This is daughter. All right. Okay. And Gloria started really this whole initiative um, back in 1988 when she decided she wanted to make a difference in the industry. Wow. Wow. So did seeing your mom in real estate motivate you to go into real estate? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, back then there were minorities in the industry, but not very many women. So it was very unusual to see women and then one, you know, my mom has always been strong, but one that kind of um, had the presence to be confident to enter into that. Yeah. But, you know, on the side of that, my mom always pulled everyone in. So she's a CPA as well, and she had that relationship with financial support yeah. for our community overall. Yeah. So then, Cameron, I'm going to jump to you because... What was it like for you watching two generations ahead of you in this field? I have a lot to fill, <laughs> a lot of shoes to fill. Um, it was amazing watching my grandmother do it and then to turn around. And honestly, I was my mom's partner from the day I was born. <laughs> so I, it was amazing watching her grow up basically and become the strong woman, independent woman that she is today. And now I just wanna learn everything I can from her so I can be the same way, so. So, Miss Gloria, what was it for you? Who was it for you that encouraged you to go into this field? It's very interesting because initially I was working part time or after school for a woman who had some disabilities and she was living in Fox Chapel and she brought me in as, as her child care helper. And she taught me a lot about the real estate and then I met Randall Hayes, and he is a motivator. <laughs> and he talked me into doing this business full time. Uh, he loved it, and he taught me what I needed to know to feel that it was something that I could do as a profession. Yeah, mm -hmm. so fast forward to today, mm -hmm. and we still don't have a lot of African Americans in this industry, especially okay. in the broker um, ranks where you guys are. So. What are some of the things that you're doing to help encourage that? So as she shared, and it's been the same, my career um, has been a little more on the corporate side, but still in real estate. And as she shared, everyone that I've met through my career that's been successful always references back to a mentor, somebody who encouraged them, someone who supported them, someone, you know, Let's face it, this industry, like most, it's not for the faint at heart, you know? And sometimes when you get into the industry, especially as a minority, you kind of feel lonely and left out. So one of the things that, um, you know, she's mentioned and what we believe will help minorities to enter into this is to have somebody they can call on, that they can trust, that has the experience, the foundation, and kind of the, 
the, the wherewithal to get them through it. Yeah, so you, you have an initiative actually, right? You do. Talk a little bit about the initiative and also there's a big gala coming up too <laughs> uh, for yes. the initiative. So tell us a little bit about that. With my daughter coming into the business and my granddaughter coming into the business, I realize that there is such a great need to have um, someone to depend on, someone who can show you the ropes, someone who's been through it mm -hmm. and survived. Mm -hmm. So the initiative was, okay, we need to bring more people into the industry. We need to bring not just young people, but older people with experience mm -hmm. and exposure. And um, we thought that we would do this by offering scholarships. And with the scholarships, we would also bring them in to the fold and mentor them to show them that you can be successful in this business mm -hmm. because I have been, they have been, and we are want to bring, we're wanting to bring more people into the industry. Yeah. Well, before we go, we want to let you know, or have you guys let us know about this gala that you have mm -hmm. coming up on the 24th fourth of February. Yes. Tell us about the gala. So it's going to be hosted at the Hotel Indigo in East Liberty. Mm -hmm. It is um, the speakers that are going to be there are phenomenal. We've got representatives of HUD um, that were, which is important because they understand the inner workings of what's needed in our community. But we also have business professionals, um, some architects. This event will also have entertainment, so it will be kind of like a party with a purpose. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to recognize those that have decided and they uh, went through the scholarship program, want to get into the industry. They're going to become our mentor ease. That's a <laughs> correct word. <laughs> is that a correct word? But um, so that we can then bring them into the fold. And as my mom said, you know. Um, we have a very, we have five awardees, and the interesting thing is it's an eclectic blend of people from our communities, and the idea is they all have a focus and a goal to work from within. They understand our challenges, they understand, you know, the narrative, and that's the work that we need to do. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. We're going to put some information about your gala on our website, but congratulations on everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll have my last word when we come back. Motivation. What is it that makes us do the things we do? Motivation is powerful, especially when it leads you on a path to do good for others. It's even more powerful when you can take a negative experience and use it as a motivator for change for the better. All of our guests today are using different motivating factors to do something positive and uplifting that hopefully will impact and motivate the next generation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Intersections.